Hello? I want to talk about something that I think is very important for everybody involved in this architectural industry and especially computational design. Because I keep uh, talking to architects, as you know, my background for the last 20 years, I have worked on very, very large scale projects. Um, and I worked with uh, fabricators, with civil engineers and with architects. And in the recent couple of years, I find myself comp repeating this phrase all the time. Look, Rhino is a geometry engine. Revit is a database. Rhino is a geometry engine. Revit is a database. Why do I keep repeating that? Because we have this constant clash in the in architectural world, and most of you know that, that um, we need BIM, right? BIM is everywhere, and uh, BIM is equated to Revit, right? Revit is BIM software. Of course, many of you know that there is other BIM software, like ArchiCAD especially, and others on the, but Revit took the market somehow and uh, it's equated with BIM. In my view, BIM is a geometry with some metadata added on it. It's not that complicated. But Revit nailed it because it approached, this is again my opinion, uh, <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm not going to repeat that, but Revit approached uh, doing architecture like a database. It approached building like a database, which is great, which is what I want to do. But at the end of my video, I will make a point that we do not really need BIM software, but I do really think that the building should be a database. In our line of work, we work mostly now and we want to work mostly with prefabricated architecture assembled on site. And if you imagine uh, some simple parts, imagine some screws, nuts, bolts, steel beams, they all have geometry defined, right? And now imagine those parts being assembled and those assemblies being assembled, assembled, you're creating a pyramid. At the top of the pyramid is the building. Um, you could say it's not a build pyramid, it's a tree structure, which is how it is represented in uh, many software, but we'll come to that. At the, at the bottom of that pyramid, you have geometries, and you can save those geometries in whichever format you need, but the rest of the building is just an Excel table. Right? It's an Excel table that tells you which asset is at what position in space. And my point is that recently we came to work like this, where we try to represent entire buildings, entire houses, simply as a long but very simple Excel table of assets and their position in space. Now, this is nothing new. Almost every single software, CAD software, including BIM software done since the beginning, had this in mind, right? Some of the basic programming principles we have, I'm including something for programming to make a connection, is that if you see a same, the same code repeated twice somewhere in your code base, you're doing something wrong. Most likely that code should be wrapped in some kind of a function and then you call the same function from both places. Why is that good? Because if anything needs to change at that function, you just go there, change it once and that's it. If you have twice the same code, you have to change it twice, right? That same principle is uh, applied in the CAD software. It's much more understood in the mechanical engineering industry, electrical engineering, but the software like CATIA and so on, they had this tree structure from the very beginning and they understood that you, if you make something like a screw, you make it once and then that becomes a part and then it gets repeated everywhere, but it references only one single part, only one single geometry. Uh, that's not a surprise even for AutoCAD users. We have blocks, right? In Rhino, we have blocks. The idea behind the block is exactly that. When you have an asset, you have one block, it has geometry inside, but then you create instances. Video game engines rely on that as well. Renderings rely on that because, it, because you have, when you have instances, it's much easier and faster to, uh, calculate calculate uh, the visualization of those of those elements. So what I'm saying is nothing new, but in the practice, in architectural practice, it is uh, hard to apply because first of all, architects don't come from that world, don't come from that world to understand the systems of parts and assemblies, but uh, there is two more aspects to it. First is something I talk about in other videos that when we design, we do not start with parts. 
And one of the my goals in the latest videos and in the future is to push this approach in architecture where we actually start with parts. We start with parts and assemblies and we can create digital twins very fast parametrically from the very first stage of the project. I'm not going to elaborate on that because I talk about it in other videos. But the point is that uh, in, in architecture, we have this iterative uh, design process where like the generative AI creates images, right? First it's blurry and then the resolution starts to increase. That's how we create some lines and sketches and those lines then slowly uh, have some shape. We know that it's a wooden structure. Then we zoom in and increase the resolution and then we know that it's like two wooden plates connected with something and then we define that something later those are some screws and so on so we increase that when you do that you create start creating these geometrical models that don't follow those basic principles right they're not made out of parts they're not made out of blocks they're usually some blobs of geometry and it's this creates chaos and exchange of models and communication bottlenecks that we all are aware of so that's one thing it's the design process right the other thing that we need to understand is uh, that if you have this pure database approach like Revit does, you're missing on something. What is that? That is geometry. So we, now we come back to the phrase that Revit is a geometry engine and Revit is a database. Because when we design, unlike the mechanical engineering industry, where there is a lot of a lot of modeling of the parts, but once you figure that one part out, it's used a million times. We create a lot of new parts, right? You create a building, there's like 70% of it when it comes to beams and whatever structural elements, windows, even doors, they're not standardized, right? So you have to model them. So in our uh, industry, there is a lot of modeling of new parts. And when we do model, we need a lot of geometrical tools to do that. Rhino is amazing as a geometry engine. It's the best geometry engine I know, especially because it's based on the NURBS geometry. So you can make these intersections, you know, Boolean, unions, differences, and a lot of, lot of very, very geometrically, mathematically complex operations that you need to create the element you want. Revit is missing that. Right. Revit is approaches they are building as a database. It has cool way to pair your geometry, your family. So the, the blocks that we talked about before, they are simply called families in Revit. But again, that's the same principle. A family then has instances. So you, uh, it has a great way of, of, of manipulating those families and those instances and putting them in space and then giving you all the schedules, creating all the plans. It has a lot of uh, good uh, 2D geometry engines, if you want, in the background. But it, when it comes to 3D geometry, especially for those complex projects like the one that I worked on, it's lacking that, right? So especially I, I know it because I do a lot of, I make a lot of plugins for Revit and I access a lot of its geometrical operations in its API and I see that they're not so good. Let's, let's, let's leave it, let's leave it at that. That is why uh, most serious big architectural office have this approach that they use Rhino, not only for competitions, but also for the development of the projects, development of the geometry needed, and then use tools like Rhino inside Revit to uh, transfer it to Revit so that they have that database capabilities. So the problem with Rhino is that it didn't create such good ways to, to manipulate the building, especially not to create 2D drawings, but then like generally all the documentation, right? The part lists, the schedules, and so on. Uh, that is why we, the computational designers, the ones that know how to create plugins for Rhino, we can create our own systems then and to uh, then make Rhino be the center of our universe and use it as the best of both worlds. Like we use it, it as a geometry engine for which it is the best and then where it's lacking, like this uh, adding the metadata, metadata to the geometries, parametrically generating instances, then like exporting part lists, schedules, preparing everything production for production and so on. Then we create our own tools for it. So this parametric design is somehow seen as a complex things, but we try to make a full circle and break through this complexity. So we do create all these tools to come back and represent your building as the simplest Excel form there is. A list of parts with their position in space. 
You can turn around yourself right now, wherever you're sitting, you see a table. Table is made out of a couple of elements, a couple of assemblies, door, doorknob. Everything is a single part, has geometry, and it has its position in space. X, Y, Z. That's it. And your house becomes this list of assemblies, and each assembly is a sub-assembly, as we said, like a tree structure. Now, for many of you, I didn't say anything new. Especially if you're someone that's in computational design, someone that has experience, uh, you know all this. But there are a lot of newcomers and a lot of people that maybe work in architecture in the design phase but don't have so much contact with others. Um, the Whatever the truth is, the fact is that I keep repeating that phrase a couple of times per week at different meetings. Rhino is a geometry engine, Revit is a database. You can supplement either side, if you're using only Revit or you're using only Rhino. In my practice, we found it easier to supplement with, uh, supplement, like use Rhino and then specially make our own tools that uh, can lead to the production and assembly of the entire structures. As I mentioned before, the Las Vegas, Las Vegas sphere, the entire inner structure, the entire screen, we did all of that in Rhino, no 2D, everything where it went from very simple rectangles to the full digital twin, to the CNC machine, to the G code, fully ready for production and assembly at the click of a button, right? Only in Rhino, 100% Rhino. But I talk on, uh, about specific projects like the Las Vegas sphere in other videos and you can find them. The takeaway home for you is that you maybe can, if you haven't so far, adjust your perspective and look at this software like they are. If you need documentation and collaboration, which most of large architectural offices needs, then Revit is kind of inevitable. It, unless you go more, much more deeply into the computational design and, and parametric design. Still, at the end of the day, for the collaboration with other, for, for the collaboration of, with others, a lot of them you uh, ask for Revit files and so on. It's it's not avoidable. I don't have anything against Revit. I think it's an amazing software, uh, but I'm just trying to explain that Revit is not really a modeling tool, and Rhino is a modeling tool. So so if there is a larger point here, it's choose the right tool for the right job. That's something that I tried to emphasize in the past and keep an eye on what is used to create geometry and what is used to create a database. And at the end of the day, you want your building to add be a database. That's completely, completely fine goal. But at the bottom of that pyramid uh, of, of assemblies are parts and those parts have very complex geometries sometimes. So you want to be able to use a nice and good geometry engine to create those parts. So I'll stop here. I'll hope you uh, learned something here If and I didn't waste your time. If you have any questions about this or want me to elaborate more on this subject, I will gladly do so. I just wanted to uh, do it spontaneously and freely and say something about, about this uh, phrase that I keep repeating and hopefully um, give you a new li light and maybe a new perspective on the whole CAD BIM software approach and generally approach in architecture on how to design because if we keep designing like we do in, in this way of increasing resolution I think it's very slow so I'm really really pushing for creating parts and designing with parts and assembly with parts but we will talk uh, about that more thank you and stay free